I, here you can see that we have a MOSFET circuit and we want to analyze it to find the DC values for the currents, the voltages for each of these MOSFETs. The conditions for this MOSFET is that Vt is 1 and Km prime W over L is 1 milliamp per volt squared. Lambda is also given as 0 so we can ignore the RO and we ignore the effect it has on the DC current. The first thing we're going to do is notice that I1, which is here, is going to be 0. We also notice that the current is already stated for IS2. So that means that with no current flowing in this branch, so this is zero, all the current that is flowing through here is also equal to the current that is flowing here. And so this is also two milliamps flowing in this branch. So with that knowledge, we can say that the voltage at VG2 we know is 10 minus this drop, which is four, 2K times two milli. So this is a plus sign this is a minus sign and this is a plus. And then there's no drop across here and that's equal to VG2. So that gives us 10 minus four plus two for a value of eight volts for VG2. Knowing VG2, we, we need to also find an equation for VS2 and VS2, which is here, is gonna be a minus five and then this is plus to minus, so a plus IS2 times 8600 plus 2 is going to be our loop equation. So that again was the minus 5 plus this drop plus 2, and we get a minus 3 plus IS2 8600. So from there we're going to plug that into the IS2 equation, which is here. And so we're going to take this 2 and we multiply it over to the other side. And then we're going to divide by the 1 milli, and so we get the division of 1 milli. The VGS2, we're going to plug in VG2, which is 8, so we get 8. And then we're going to take a minus of this whole quantity. So this becomes a plus, and this one becomes a minus. And, that, and then minus, this is VT, and that's all squared. So now the 2 over 1 milli becomes 2K, and then this becomes uh, 8 plus 3 minus 1 is 10, and then the minus this quantity, and that's all squared. And so we multiply this out to get this squared. So don't forget to bring over this 2K to make this side zero. So the two minus 2K comes over to this side, and then I have to add it to this quantity. And then I do a minus B, which this is a minus B, so I get a plus, and then it's 174,000, plus or minus B squared minus four a, which in this case, this is your A, and C, which is this quantity. So here's your A and your C over 2A. So multiplying that out, I get two values. I get approximately 1 milli and 1.35 milli. Plugging that into the VS2 equation gives me 8.7 for VS2. And with the VG2, then that gives me a VGS2 of minus 0.7, which means VT is net less than, so VT was given as one, and so this is less than that, and so that is not the right value. So this will be my IS2 value is about one milli. So now I know VG2 VS2 and the currents in this branch. The other thing that I want to find is VS1, and so in order to do that, we already know the current, 2 milliamps, so we can actually set that up to solve for VGS2. So IS2 is given, and then it's the 1 half KM prime W over L VGS minus VT squared, and we can solve that. So we set that at current equal to the two milliamps, and then we're gonna solve for the VGS1. So we're gonna bring the two over, so that becomes four milli, which is where this came from, and then the one milli we divide. So this gives plus or minus the square root of four here, and then the square root of this means that these cancel each other out. So the square root cancels out with the squared, and so I get a VGS1 is equal to plus or minus four, square root of four plus one. 
So we see that that gives us a three or a minus one, but the minus one when VT is one means that it will be off. So that's not the valid choice. So we're gonna choose three and with three is greater than the VT of one. So then we know VGS one is gonna be VG one minus VS one. And we can find VG one, which is the value here we know that there's no current flow, so this is zero. So we have a minus five and then a minus two, which gives us minus seven. So that gives us minus seven volts for a VG1. And then VS1 is gonna be, we're given if with this value is three, and we know a minus seven, so we then can solve this, set it equal to three, and solve for the VS1. So in this case, it gives us a VS1 of minus 10 volts. So now we wanna prove that this, these transistors are saturated. So the conditions to do that are to say that VGS is greater than or equal to VT, and in this case, we had eight minus 0.56, which gives us 2.4, so it is. So this is back to M2. And then VD2, we can find, so VD2 is the loop through here, and this is gonna be plus to minus of the IS2 that we found previously. And that was about one volt, or one milliamp. And so we have a minus one milliamp times one K, which is minus one plus 12. And so we get a value of a plus 11. And that is greater than VG2 minus VT. And VG2 minus VT is seven. So that is actually the condition that is met. And so that has solved the, and proved that M2 is saturated. For M1, it asked for the bias point, and the bias point is either just the statement of what the IS value is or what the VGS value is. The last part of this problem asked for you to find if there is a given amplification, and in this case, the amplification is from VS2 to the input of minus 30 volt per volt. Assume that the input frequency also keeps the circuit operating in that correct range, and that the amplification does not pull the transistor out of saturation. Will VS2 ever be three volts? Why or why not? So we need to look at the DC value and add on now this AC consideration. The input is given as 100 milliamps for the V amplitude, and then we're said to ignore the frequency because it keeps it in the right range. So for those conditions, we had 100 milliamp, which is 0.1, and we multiply it by our gain of 30. That gives us a three volt AC. Our DC value was 5.6 volts, and we add on the AC, which is a plus or minus three. And we're gonna have, a, it, the signal is gonna look like this if we measure it at VS2. It's gonna be centered around the 5.6, and then it's gonna go up by three and down by three. So it's gonna go up to 8.6 and down to 2.6. And so it will oscillate around there. So in this case, it will drop below three volts at the minimum, which is right, because it will go all the way down to 2.6 volts. So yes, the answer is yes for this one. Yes, it does drop below three volts. Thanks for watching.